good morning friends uh, today uh, we are going to talk about reading comprehension reading comprehension is considered to be the best and most important topic for english grammar because it is asked in every exam where there is english as a paper so it is important for us to understand that what what to do to gain score more marks for reading comprehension number 1 number 2 what are the strategies for opting reading comprehension uh, based on my experience uh, in teaching various uh programs like ielts toefl gmat gre cat exam competitive exam for bank upsc gpsc right i could find that there is one thing common that creates a problem to all the students right while opting english as a paper and that is reading comprehension so i thought that instead of going for simply teaching you or discussing the points of reading comprehension for for the gtu exam i should take an opportunity to discuss this little bit more in detail so that it can help you for your further studies too i mentioned in the content that after the completing of this series of two or three lectures of reading comprehension you will be in position to solve any of the reading comprehension passages if we look at the details of various exams right exam wise program wise the level of difficulty is changed reading comprehension is something which requires no introduction because from the standard 8 maybe from standard 4th or 5th this is there in your syllabus but the problem is we have never understood or we could never go in detail about strategies in exam when you are asked an unseen passage is given and you need to read the paragraph and answer the questions after you know reading the passage that is the most common strategy that everybody goes for but we need to go in detail little bit more you will be surprised to know that the students who score more marks and students who score less marks if you look at the difference between these two totals you will find definitely a major role played by reading comprehension that's why reading comprehension is very important for us we will go in detail one by one right we will try to understand we will try to decode each and every information required to understand reading comprehension so let's start with the first screen the first question that comes to our mind is what do you mean by reading what is reading reading can be defined as decoding symbols that means if you what comes before your eyes in terms of symbols if you can decode it if you can understand it that is reading otherwise it is called seeing for example if you are traveling uh, to interstate you know you are moving from one state to another state and uh, it happens that uh, you uh, you know before uh, before your uh, vehicle there is another vehicle maybe a truck or so and you find messages written you you may find the sign boards of different languages if you do not know what is written there that means you simply can see the sign board you can you, you cannot say that i i can read the sign board but if you can understand it we can call it reading so same happens with english same happens with times of india same happens with other things 
that means whenever we find any text of any language if that language is understood by us if it is decoded by us in that way we can call it that we are reading otherwise we should say that we are seeing so i guess that now it is clear to your mind that reading stands for decoding symbols symbols means any text written any text which is there right okay now so we can understand now that okay the first part of our title reading comprehension we could clear what is reading now let's move to the next one what we mean by comprehension right it is little bit interesting comprehend means to understand process and recall what you read so in a simplest way in one sentence in one line if i want i want to answer your question as what do you mean by comprehension i would say that comprehension is equal to understanding now when when you call understanding when you understand each and every part right i must tell you that why english you know reading comprehension everywhere it has got more than 25% weightage in every test where english is tested as a language in any of the proficiency test english right of english reading comprehension is there because if you do if you cannot read the passage if you do not know the structure of that language if you do not know the vocabulary of that language if you don't do not know the concept of that language in that case you cannot understand you cannot decode the text given content given paragraphs given and you cannot answer so this is one of the best ways of testing somebody's language proficiency for the second language maybe for the foreign language maybe for the other language so here one can gauge gauge means to check to test right the proficiency of any language by testing reading comprehension skills that's why it is very important and unfortunately we see that uh, on the campus right of the campus the reading habits of our students nowadays are not good and that is the biggest challenge that we find at the time of placement at the time of you know further studies that's why reading is important with understanding let's move to the next slide if we talk about the introduction right why reading is important just imagine that you are in a jungle and want to find out your way to get out of the jungle right what you need you need a compass you need a proper direction without proper direction you cannot you know get out of that difficulty or the jungle because in jungle you find everything is similar right you, you know it is in a such a in a camouflage that you find that everything is similar and it is difficult to get out of it but if you have a compass you can definitely find out your way you can find out your highway you can find out your better way so what is compass i am going to focus on this today i'm going to discuss the certain tips which will help you as a compass when when you go for opting the question of reading comprehension you need the right direction to understand the passage so you need to identify and understand the purpose of this passage right so here i would like to mention that instead of simply reading when there is a reading for a purpose that makes lots of difference we'll discuss it in a in a, in a very detailed manner in the coming slides in the coming session right so if you if you if you have a purpose you can have a purpose of reaching to your goal you can definitely reach to your goal right like it can be any of the way but you can reach to your destination definitely but if you are roaming around if there is no destination if you do not know what is the you know purpose of reading in that case it is good for nothing you will be simply wasting your time and energy fine so we need to have reading for purpose but right? i i mean this might be interesting if you read this just think about reading comprehension section as if it were a reality show 
a TV show where you are dropped in the middle of the jungle with no clues about where you are or how to proceed. The same thing which I explained in an early form, but this is more a you know type of uh, cinematography where you can find you know you can imagine that you are there. For example, if I put you there in the middle of the movie and I tell you that you enjoy the movie, but you will not be able to enjoy the movie. Why? Because you don't know what the movie is. You know what is the purpose of the movie? How movie started? What is the beginning of the plot? Right? What What are the hero heroines? And you don't know anything about it. And if I put you put you between in between of any of the movie or a TV show, it will definitely you know create a kind of confusion in your mind. Same is the same is with you know paragraph or we can call it reading. So for reading, you need to know that each and every structure, each and every part. Uh, one more to go. Just imagine that you encountering an essay. Uh, encountering means encounter means to understand, right? To face, to meet, to see. Fine. Here uh, you come across. Fine. Encounter is a very uh, typical word which has been used in Hindi movies more by police department, right? But encounter means the small meeting in a way. Fine. So let's talk about it. That you don't know what the title is, you don't know who the author is, you don't know when or where it was published. You can't see the uh, paragraphs before and after the essay. You don't have enough time to fully read. The content is dense, boring, academic, smeared with jargons and covers topics. Uh, you have little knowledge, and your mastery of those. 150 to 300 words will determine your future business school and career that is wherever you go it will definitely create a kind of thing fine now uh, look at the first thing you know title title you know the, uh, every movie you know you look at it every serial the title of the serial title of the movie title of the book definitely plays a you know, role a big role in understanding that what book would be what the movie would be what the title would be Right here, the author. Every author has the typical mentality, typical style of writing. So, by you know, if you read from authors' books or all these, for example, Robin Sharma. If you read Robin Sharma, you will definitely find a different, typical kind kind of flavor. If you read Jatin Bhagat, you will find diff different type of flavor in Jatin Bhagat's novel. Right. So every novel, every author has its own aroma. That, that is found, you know, in the books, in the content, in the text that he or she contributes. Okay, now, so that is important. Even you don't know when it was published, right? It happens, right? Uh, there are there are books, you know, which 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 were published before hundred years, and after hundred years, it has got value, right? So the relevance of time frame is also important, right? And uh, if you look at the uh, fourth part, fifth part, that if you don't know the before or after paragraphs, if you don't have time to fully read, and the problem definitely creates, you know, uh, becomes more difficult, right? Where you don't know the what jargon, jargon means technical words. We have seen this in the vocabulary section. Technical words related to that that area, that you know, subject. The thing is that if you have little knowledge about it in that way, it will be difficult for you. For example, I've given here of business school, right? That means if you if you are from background of commerce background in that way, you can know about jargons, technical words related to uh, you know, commerce. For example, credit and debit and you know depreciation and all this. But if you are from the uh, engineering background, definitely there will be different kind of jargon. In engineering also, uh, different branches creates. You know, has different jargons. So these all things club together, and you know, help you to solve one paragraph. It is not about a formula where you can apply and you can get the results of your reading comprehension. Mind it. It is the altogether till date whatever you have done in your life in terms of reading that will definitely help you. So here there is no one point solution. Right, that this apply this, and you know your problems will be solved. It is not a grammar; it is application of your knowledge. That's why it is called skill. 
the reading comprehension skill. So here, what you're going to need, you're going to need a compass, right? Compass means what? Compass will give you the proper direction and that direction will help you. That direction will help you to understand where to go and where not to go. Fine. Okay. So we start with the, you know, the purpose, you know, we start with the thing that let's go for reading for purpose. That means we will read this with proper objective that what actually we wish to read to. The passages are often going to be purposefully jargon intensive. That means the purposefully there will be technical words, destruction field. That means there will be, you know, more items. There will be different items given. Now, if I, if I give you the example of essay writing, what we did in the last session, right? What we do is to convince our idea of thesis statement that I believe that it should be like this because of reason number one, two, and three. This is the only line that is important for us. But to convince the reader that what is our purpose, right? We try to... You know, we try to write, for example, for one sentence, it takes 10 words. To convince the reader to the 10 words, you write another 290 words. That means you expand, you try to support your argument. Here, we need to do the reverse thing. Now, you understand why I took, you know, iterating first and reading comprehension next. Now, here you need to find out the you know what is there in the core what is there in the middle in the heart of the paragraph right why the author has written 800 words what was the author's intention to you know convince you right that you need to find out that means from idea to explanation was the concept in essay writing now from all the explanations you need to reach the idea that is the important thing right okay now here you cannot just memorize and you know go for it right memorizing will not help you right i tell you that most of the time what students and you know, in students i have found a common difficulty while reading is the problem of regression regression means you read one line and you forget then when you go to the second line, you forget the first line. That means we have very small span of attention. We read word by word, we read letter by letter, we read sentence by sentence. A good reader generally reads more than more than 400 words to 500 words in a minute time. You check it out that how many words you can read and please understand that it's not just seeing the text it's also about understanding the thing that means in when you read 400 words you should be able to uh, understand all 400 words in a minute so that is the important thing but here if you read for a purpose it will definitely help you to read to the destination now move to the next one I would like to discuss here in this session the common strategies. We call it basic strategies for uh, you know reading passages. Fine. There are types of questions which I'm going to discuss in the next uh, session. Right. Before that, I'll share the worksheet with you people so that we can definitely you know work out. And in the next uh, third session, we'll have doubt solving. So we're going to talk about three sessions for reading comprehension. I'm going to give you more weightage like anything to reading comprehension, keeping in mind that this is going to be very important for the people for your entire career. Even I tell you that apart from English, right? If you read a book for your mechanical engineering, computer engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, right? Whatever branch it is yours, right? You go to the library, you have a book of 400 pages. Now the thing is that, how to understand that what 400 pages say in, in your you know, final semester, seventh semester, eighth semester, when you are going for a project, how to understand project report, how to prepare a project report, right? When you read somebody's project report, you need to understand. So everywhere, 
reading comprehension is going to play a vital role, a key role. That's why we will go a little slow, we'll go in detail, and we'll go from right. Okay, so uh, let's start with the strategies. <clears throat> Uh, this looks similar to uh, passport communication skills because uh, I have given a very basic knowledge about you know, this reading, uh, comprehension in passport communication skills. I think everybody has you know, done that course. If you have not done it, it's important that you complete that course. Right? In that, I had mentioned that your paragraph can be classified fine, based on the content. For example, I tried to make it more symbolic so that it can be less interest, uh, less boring and more interesting. For example, you need to you know read and understand whether the given paragraph is science based, right? It is a historical one or it is business based, right? There are other ways or other you know topics are there, other categories are there. But I have for you people to understand it clearly. What I have done is I have given the three things. I've taken the three things so that I can tell you that paragraphs can be you know, bifurcated, can be distinguished, can be divided, can be classified, right? Can be, you know, uh, what we call it, you know, um, they can be segregated as per the content of the paragraph. For example, if it is science based, right, it can be treated in that way. If it is historical, it can be treated in a different way. If it is business, it can be treated in a different way. So if you know the what is the type of the paragraph, what is the, you know what is the passage is about, it will help you. For example, if it is of historical, there will be more about dates. There will be more about you know uh, events. If it is science based, it would be more about you know inventions, cause, you know effects, you know contribution, social impact, and all. But if it is business, it will be related to profit and loss and you know uh, different processes. Right, so it, it matters a lot when you if you understand what what the paragraph is about. Now, uh, what I've done is, based on this categories, what I've done is, I have divided uh, paragraph writing in five parts. Right, these paragraphs can be divided in five different parts. So these five steps will definitely help you to look at the paragraph. You know, more magnificently, more you know, uh, detailed way. For example, the first step, right? It is about classify the passage. Now, what is classify the passage? That means, is this a persuasive essay or descriptive one? Is it a science or immunities? That means you try to understand that, uh, you know, classify. That means you are done here. The, this is first step. Right? You classified it. Whether it is science one, historical one, descriptive, persuasive, or what? Right? Persuasive means the word persuasive stands for that I have given an argument and I stick to that argument and I try to you know, support that argument, right? In, in the given essay, right? If it is negative, then I'll try to give the contradictory, undermining arguments to prove that whatever I said wrong is wrong, right? Okay. Now, second part is break down each paragraph. Here, you do not need a kind of hammer, right, or driller. That you know, you can drill the paragraph and you can, you know, break the paragraph. You can, you know, tone the paragraph. You don't need to tone the paper. Here, you need to do a mental work, lots of mental work, right? Okay, so you need to break down the each paragraph, right? And you look for the main idea. What is the tone and transition? Tone means whether it, whether it is you know a, a positive tone, negative tone, angry, right? Or if it is you know sad one, fine. So what is the type of you know a tone that helps? Uh, a tone question based on tone uh, will be there. So we'll be discussing more about tones. Transition means as I explained to you while explaining as a writing, it is there. It comes there. When we talk about you know, moving from one idea to another idea, we need a connecting, we need a bridge. And these words, right, bridging, that helps us. So here, transition words will definitely help us. Okay, now, uh, paragraph number three, 
uh, step number three is see the organization. That means when you break down the paragraph, that means from the given paragraph, from the paragraph, right? Yeah. yeah. This is the you know government is forcing each and everyone to stay at home, stay safe because of this COVID-19. You know, you find lots of people, you know, they are folded their sleeves and they're working hard to save our lives. And we should respect them and we should stay at home. So that was the you know announcement which passed by my, you know, my home just now. Okay, let's come back to the point. Uh, when you bring down each paragraph, that means you you may do it by underlining. You have to have a pen and paper, right? And you find out that, okay, uh, line number one, two, three, this is one section. Line number four, five, six, another section. Line number seven is another section. Line number eight and nine is another section, right? So in that way, you can divide that one paragraph has different, you know, sections. After doing that, you can see the organization. That means you can create a kind of mental map. See, that, that looks a little bit difficult by doing for the first time, but when you are habituated with this, that will help you like anything, right? Okay, so when you prepare a mental map, that means all this, there are different parts, right? They become, that means, you know, from one entire, uh, what we call it, island, you broke it into different islands. Now you connect it. Connect it to that which island is connected with this. That means, if you remember, right, uh, the reverse process of essay writing. That thesis statement plus reason one, reason two, reason three. That means you you know break it into parts, and now you can connect it. Okay, thesis statement, thesis statement, and reason three. That reason number one. That means from body paragraph, paragraph number one is connected with thesis statement one, right? That paragraph number two, paragraph number three. In that way, you can connect it easily. Then you can find out the big idea. Right? That means you look for the unusual language that makes an important point. Pay more attention to the first and last paragraph. Right? So uh, climax or the you know, the, the first 10 minutes, right? that creates a lot of importance. So here we need to find out right? that, okay, what happens in the first uh, first few lines, the last few lines that definitely decides the importance or the you know the center point or area of the paragraph. Now diagnose the author's purpose. Right? What is the author's intention? Is the author interested to simply educate the reader or discuss certain policy, or author is there to just you know uh, give a philosophical idea. So, what author's intention is, right? What author's intends to mention that is important. Now, these five points we are going to discuss in detail with more clarity, right? So, what I mentioned is four parts. This would be you know, more uh, uh, clear to you because it has got more clarity visually, right? Okay. Now, look at this. In the first uh, image, what I've done is if you consider this, this triangle as paragraph, that means from here we selected that this is historical one. So we selected this, you know, this type of paragraph. And based on that paragraph, what I've done is I have divided this is hypothetical. This is for example, right? So in this way, what I've done is from one paragraph right one reading passage i have divided this passage into different parts this is symbolically right what i have done is, right so now i can understand that in one passage which is given to me i can find where you know this one two three four five and six so i can divide or i have divided one passage into six parts fine so now, the second is, see the organization. That means now what I've done is, I have tried to connect it. For example, this is the main part. This is my thesis statement. Now, 
this is connect this paragraph is connected here and this is connected here right in this way i could find the organization this is a mental map mental map i have created that okay this is expanded or this expands or moves in this way so now i i am very clear with my passage that how passage has progressed right all my three reasons my examples everything i have mentioned here that is clear to me now now i can find the big data as i told you that it can be in the beginning of the passage or in the end of the passage so this is the main idea of the passage that i could find right now i put it there again and look at the entire paragraph highlighting the big idea of the author right and then i can diagnose right that what is the purpose and then it will help me so one by one we'll go through all these four parts so that we can be clear about what we are interested or what we intend to say to of this reading comprehension so first part is break down each part of the passage now each paragraph is the basic unit of the essay that means every paragraph is important no paragraph is written like you know for the sake of writing right we are talking about first thing right first thing is break down each part so we are in the section of breaking down each part we can more easily comprehend ideas and intentions and follow the organizational structure when reading a paragraph and after finishing it make a mental note and write down three things that is important right so okay, after doing this what will happen is what are the three things is required right okay now first thing is main idea of the each paragraph open the first sentence in a paragraph will be the topic sentence or transition sentence now you remember if you try to connect with paragraph writing it will you know you will get to know that in paragraph writing our you know when we start the body body part that is second paragraph right after completing our thesis statement the first line of each paragraph will be the thesis the topic sentence topic sentence means we mention a reason and we expand it then in the next paragraph we expand explain reason number 2 and we explain it the reason number 3 and we explain it right so that means every in every paragraph the first sentence will be about topic sentence topic sentence will discuss the reason the reason which is mentioned there in the thesis statement right if you can connect it it will be good for you right try to connect it that way it should tell you the main idea of the paragraph or the paragraph's relation to the proceeding one fine that means if you look at it what i explained right right there about coherence that when you move from one paragraph to another paragraph when you move from one idea to another idea in a simplest way one sentence to another sentence for the smooth transition right you need one thing and that is what we call it cohesive devices so you find out that how many cohesive devices are there how many connecting words are there how many linking words are there how many conjunctions are there based on the conjunctions you can find out figure out that okay these are the different sentences that okay i can find out and based on that you can look at it the transition one okay pay close attention to the first sentence of each paragraph as i told you that first sentence plays a vital role right that's the hero of the you know movie that's a trailer of the movie so that is important for you people right so here we're looking at by dividing this you know break down into the graph and when you break down for each broken part each separate part each segregated part right you need to do the same activity which will help you now next one right next one if you see see the organization of the passage now organization of the passage that means what is the structure of the paragraph what is the structure of the paragraph right okay 
So let's go for it. As I explained you earlier, that we need to find out when you when you break the paragraph, we need to find out that which part is connected to other part. So how it has got progressed, how it is connect interconnected, right? Okay. For this, what we can do is uh, we can we will uncover the author's organization and develop a roadmap of the text. This thing will help you to find out the roadmap, how the paragraph passage has traveled, right? How it has progressed, how it has got developed, how it has got expanded. That will help you. The roadmap essentially paraphrases the main point of each paragraph. This is very important line for us. Right? What I explained you here, right, or what I keep on explaining you is that for whatever we write in the thesis statement, find the reason. The same reason is written there in the first line of the each paragraph as a topic sentence. And whatever we mention there, our argument, we try to convince the reader with our arguments. And that is simply paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is we try to tell the same thing by using different words. It happens. You, you are mastering that, I tell you. Frankly, I tell you. that When you do not know the answer of any question, you paraphrase it. Right, you you twist it. You know, you know only one sentence, and you can write 15 sentences about the same thing. Right? that moves around, and you know, just merry go round. It comes, you know, comes and goes, comes and goes like this. Now, and that is paraphrasing. You are master in that, so I'll not talk about it more. Right, I can see the smile on your faces if you understand that. Fine. So paraphrasing here, but it has got more importance, more relevance. Right, it is not the same words. It is about more examples, appreciating, supporting, right? The main argument, right? I must tell you that uh, if you are free and if you can watch Barack Obama's last speech before he won presidential election, election in the US, right? You look at that 45 minute speech and that, that is available in, on YouTube. I'm also going to share the link on your WhatsApp group, right? But this that is an, a fantastic or that is most beautiful example of paraphrasing because he has mentioned in his speech for every argument he has mentioned three things that means whatever he mentioned he mentioned thrice not twice but thrice but different ways so as a communication expert as an excellent communicator if you want to be please it is you know it is must for you to watch that 45 minute video Right, you can find it out as I'm going to share with you people. Now, why do you need to make a mental roadmap for the next thing? What is the requirement of it? It is it has got more requirement, it has got a very important thing. Why is it so? Because to uncover the author's main point, you need to combine the author's statement with his organizational structure. That means if you cannot outline what author is intended to say or author is interested to say, or author is, you know, willing to say. So in that way, to reach to the main point, the core, the crux, right, you need to go through each and every structure that the you know, author has expanded, right? So this is what the reverse thing, reverse engineering that we did with, you know, paragraph writing, essay writing, right? So it will be easy if you if you have more practice in paragraph writing, then definitely you can decode the things easily over here for reading comprehension. Okay, now look at it. Next one. Uh, reading for understanding. Uh, last one is finding the big idea of the passage. This is the last one. Right? Last one means uh, we need to find out that when when can we find out the big idea. That means how to reach to the you know, core of the package. See, if you if you watch a movie without title, if you read a book without you know its uh, title, it will be difficult for you. Fine. Right? Same way, uh, reading passage without title will create a kind of problem. But if you have, it will have a good idea to the main point of the essay. The writers purposefully exclude the title so that it is up to you to 
decipher the essay and it be guided. Decipher means to understand. Decipher means to find out. Decipher means to understand. Fine. Okay. So here, uh, for question purpose, fine. Uh, main I you know, to, to make it a little bit complicated. You know, it is not given there that you uh, you look at it. If it is given to you, it can be easier to make it a little bit more complex. They remove some time the main idea of the paragraph, the title of the paragraph. But it doesn't make difference. You know, when you, are, when you, are, you know, go for this kind of thing, it will help you like anything. Most of the questions, particularly higher skill uh, level questions, aren't about details, right? See, uh, it was the time when you were in eighth grade or ninth grade when you were asked questions like, you know, find out the date and, you know, find out uh, what is the meaning of this word uh, when when the author had gone first what is the talks about that uh, what happened to the x and y and z right it is not the type of question which will be there in you know the exams i'm talking about which are conducted at international level right because that is typically very typically rather beautifully you know designed to test your skills right in gt you will find definitely uh, questions, uh, paragraphs far easier than those ones. But we want to you know, make ourselves prepared for this, right? At the ultimate level, so that you know, uh, GTU will not you know disturb us in any of the things. Now, look at this. Uh, they uh, concern in the main idea the tone, scope, and the implications of the main idea usually help you to answer the more than half of the questions from the given passage. That means if you understand this, right, generally happens that uh, it does not test your memory, it tests your understanding, right? But in GTU or in lower grade exams, they test your memory, that how much you could remember from this paragraph, right? And I tell you that reading comprehension questions can be asked in two ways. It can be open-ended questions, it can be closed-ended questions. Now, you, know, you will find that what do you mean by open-ended and closed-ended? Open-ended questions means the questions where the answer can be anything. That means you are free to write any answer. Fine. For example, what was, uh, uh, I give you a simple example. The questions which have no options, they are open-ended. The questions which have options, they are closed-ended. Right. I tell you that in international exams, in most of the exams, Close-ended questions are given. That means every question has options. Every question has particular options given to you, right? So it will be easy to test your proficiency, right? Test your knowledge about reading. So we'll talk about it. Now, how to diagnose the author's purpose, right? What author is interested to say, how to find out that? You need to ask yourself, what is the author's agenda? See, every author has agenda of writing a paragraph. It is not a simply blogging, fine, or bluffing. Every author, when a, when a paragraph is written, when a report is written, it has got certain agenda. Agenda means intention. Intention means objective. Objective means purpose. So what is the purpose of writing this paragraph? It may not be the overthrow of the world, but there is always some reason the author wrote the passage. Fine. That means we need to understand that this is something we need to find out. Fine. Okay. <clears throat> Often essays will have a policy idea or suggestion to fix the problem described. This is a very common uh, style of writing a paragraph. Or you know, uh, what happens that you know there is a problem that author talks about, and then author in detail, you know, describes the probable solutions. Right, supporting. So this can be there. That can be a point of thing. Then there is a policy idea that can we change this? Can 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 we have such kind of thing in the society? And then author talks about that. But thing is that we need to reach to that area, that thing. Okay, that author is interested to expand this point and expand it with examples. Sometimes the author. Uh, might simply want to educate people about a subject or clear up a misconception. Uh, for example, you search COVID-19, most common buzzword, happening buzzword nowadays, 
you write corona and google will tell you right it will come in with red color ribbon right that what do you want to know do you want to know about details symptoms x and y and z right it means if you read any article you will find that there are people who educate you for you know coronavirus fine so here when you find any paragraph which is science based it talks about coronavirus you know preventive uh, precautions how to, you know take measures for you know keeping yourself you know at home what do you mean a lockdown right so when people write about this that means their primary objective is to educate people about coronavirus and then they will expand they will talk about what happened in usa what happened in italy what happened in russia what happened in china what is happening in india so all these things will come together and there will be a paragraph but if you look at the first thing that author's intention agenda is to educate people for covid-19 coronavirus so these these are the things how it works right it's a kind of you know uh, keeping the things in chain right you try to link up you know and make a chain of ideas and that is converted into a very good paragraph which is readable one okay and sometimes there will be a more political ideological motive for the claims made right there is a possibility that there is a political motive or ideological motive of writing a paragraph or writing the you know passage right there is always something the author uh, wants to convince you of or at least get you to learn from the passage right this is something very clear in the minds of everybody right the people are there to you know give you teach you something right to share with you people something right this is very important thing right okay now we need to be very clear about that this is the last uh, thing uh, i have discussed in even passport communication skills what is the difference between fact and opinion this is something where uh, generally people face lots of problem right so people fail to distinguish between fact and opinion fine uh, you can you can think about it what do you mean by fact and opinion right uh, because what happens that uh, uh, is one fact based on one fact the author is, you know reads examples other details in support of that they those opinions definitely support the fact but thing is that what do you mean by fact fine i'm going to give you easiest way to distinguish fact and opinion and that will help you like anything because one question about this fact and opinion will be there definitely in every passage whatever the exam is right this question is likely to be there in every exam Fine. Okay. Look at it. Be careful to distinguish fact from opinion. Though they look like facts, some statements in the essay may be false claims or unsupported opinions, loaded with bias. Bias means prejudices. Pay close attention to the language in order to distinguish fact from opinion. The author's purpose for writing the essay and his or her convictions are found. In these subtle statements of opinion, take these excerpts from the passage on water management, for example. Some of the author's statements are fact, but many are opinion. I'm going to share one example in the next session that will give you, you know, a clear hints. But I tell you that uh, you take a key, you take a mantra, right, for distinguishing fact and opinion, and you will be clear with that. I tell you that. fact can be tested please careful listen to me fact can be tested i don't tell you that fact can be true or false it can be anything right but fact can be tested whether it is there or not opinion cannot be i repeat facts can be tested opinion cannot be for example there are 
50 students online listening to my lecture now if i say 50 students are online right that means i can go and count whether it is 50 or 49 or 51 right but when in a student say i enjoy your class enjoy your class is open i cannot go and check i cannot go i cannot go and test it i'm getting my point so there are certain things the claims the agenda the purpose which is supported with with supported with proper you know arguments figures right they are facts because they can be tested right if i tell you that there are 200 trees in the garden near my home so i can go and check whether there are 200 trees or not right but when i say that people feel fresh when they move near when they go to the garden so that is my opinion because everybody you know going there may not feel fresh getting my point so that is opinion because i cannot check it right? there is no thermometer which can help which can help me to find out whether you feel fresh feel happy or not feeling is something that can be that can be observed right that cannot be tested getting my point so opinions are there moods are there there are something you know which you can feel like they're like this air and light. you can feel you cannot see it right facts are concrete things you, know, you can find it out in that way fine okay so here we'll have more examples you know about facts and opinions I'll, i'm going to discuss for example if i say that uh, there is there is a good control there is rather, there is a great control right of you know covid patients in india fine so government could control covid 19 you know in a great way so is this opinion or fact you will say i tell you this opinion why right? because i cannot go that what do you mean by great way right the death ratio of you know coronavirus is 10 percent it is fact i can go and check whether it's 10 percent or 10 percent or five percent fine but if it is written like great or big or small i cannot go and check if you cannot go and check it is opinion and here the problem is people around us by social media they feel like themselves like you know uh, great reporters and they start spreading the information which is false which is baseless which are simply opinions and based on those opinions they can't they start spreading the things and they create a kind of you know uh, uh, what we call difficulty in the minds of the others right so those worries comes you know from those opinions right only stick to the government officials figures facts that will help you so this is the distinguishing distinguished between facts and opinions right i guess you could understand it we'll have one or two questions based on facts and opinion that will give you a clear idea in the coming sessions now uh, when you talk about different question types right uh, in the next coming session right we are going to discuss about these questions main idea questions tone and attitude fact based question inferences inferences opinion right what do what uh, offers is in fact to say fine uh, vocabulary.com that you have seen a lot but here vocabulary has a different aspect right vocabulary questions you know they are basically you know uh, memory based questions or knowledge based questions that means if you are asked a question right that what do you mean by uh, what is the meaning of underlined word or what is the meaning of the italic italic word right that is what the word which is highlighted right so you need to find out a synonym or antonym from the given passage right so these kind of things are generally found uh, in vocabulary questions fine so these are the things uh, i want to discuss right uh, we will have a recap of uh, reading comprehension very fast in the very quickly in the next session and along with that i'm going to discuss you know this
question types with examples. Fine. I'll give you, uh, I'll share uh, the worksheets very soon so that you can do it in your own. And based on those things, we'll have discussion on this. And after that, after that, we will have a third session purely on doubt solving and other things. Right. I hope that you enjoyed the session. Uh, be at your home with your family. Right. Stay safe and stay at your home. Right. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Thank you very much.